Okay, good morning, everyone. I hope the weather is treating you all well. It was raining here, now it's sunny. It's crazy. It might be sunny and raining, I'm not sure. But anyway, welcome to uh, the Cassie Charter Chat. Uh, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone to keep yourself muted. Um, you may put questions into the chat. And also there will be an opportunity for questions and answers at the end. The session is being recorded. However, um, when we move into breakout rooms, those rooms will not be recorded. Today, we have several uh, topics to cover uh, related to program and fiscal hot topics. Um, and uh, we're moving back to breakout rooms by uh, regional affiliation. Next slide, please. So I'm Mifala Fairley. I'm the executive director of the, char of the Charter Schools Department at Santa Clara County Office of Ed. Um, our team here, along with the Cassie team and a few folks over at CDE make up Cassie. Um, so when I call your name, um, just give folks a wave. Um, two of our folks are not here. So Dr. Michelle Johnson, who's the associate director is not here today as well as Matthew Doherty, um, but we do have Shalu Sharma and Cynthia Tapia, who are both fiscal administrators. Next slide, please. And representing CCAP, we have Tom Hutton and David Patterson. And if Debbie Deal is here, Debbie, give folks a wave. We also have Allison Ball, who is representing CDE. All right, so, um, if you joined us last time, we used topic-based breakout rooms, which seemed to go over pretty well. Um, going forward, we've, we're planning to have at least one special breakout room per quarter, um, but today's breakout rooms will be back to our original regional rooms. So we'd like to take a moment for you to give you time to rename yourselves um, by region. So if you are in region one, or if you consider yourself to be in the Northern region, please rename yourself um, with a one in front of your name and then your uh, agency's name after your name. And you can see an example on the slide where I am uh, number one and then you have my name and then my, re my uh, organization. So take a few moments to rename yourself. Next slide, please. All right, and just wanna remind you that we have instituted a parking lot. Um, we have a lot of questions coming to us on a variety of topics, and sometimes we don't have a, an answer ready uh, immediately, um, but we do get those questions to the appropriate people at the department and uh, work with them to figure out what guidance we need to um, share with you all on those questions. Um, but we've uh, um, put some questions into the parking lot just to let you know that we're not ignoring you um, and to keep those questions coming. Um, also, because there was such a number of questions on material revisions, uh, last meeting, we are going to focus our July quarterly regional training on material revisions. And I think we have dates for you um, at the end of this meeting. Next slide, please. All right, Tom, do you want to talk about uh, some now of the Dave gets to pick this one up. Oh, sorry, Dave. Not a problem. Um, okay. Uh, now, previous uh, park, uh, chat questions. Uh, so we've got two we can respond to um, that uh, that came up uh, since the last time. Uh, we'll touch on some of the, uh, the details here, but the answers uh, are on the resource page. So feel free. The one, the first one. What are the pros and cons of switching? Uh, uh, well, we had a, a charter in our district contact us about changing the back office uh, support. Um, they were talking about switching from uh, GASB standards and now wants to switch to to uh, financial accounting standards board uh, FASB standards. And the response we've got there are: uh, What are the pros and cons of switching? 
Uh, FASB standards are created by the Finance and Accounting Standards Board, and they apply to all public companies to ensure that they are properly conducting their financial and accounting reporting activities to provide accurate and reliable in information to their shareholders and investors. GASB standards, on the other hand, are created by the Government Accounting uh, Standards Board that apply to state and local governments to ensure that they properly conduct their accounting activities so they can provide accurate and reliable information to the United States public. The differences in accounting practices exist between uh, FASB and GASB, such as balance sheet, net, net assets, and cash flow. Now, the Santa Clara County Office of Education finds that most of uh, their charter schools use um, FASB on final audit reports. One note uh, in the report is a new accounting uh, the pronouncement of leases. In February of 2016, uh, FABSI issued accounting standards update number 2016-02 leases uh, top eight, uh, topic 842. The objectives of the ASU is to increase transparency and compa comparability in financial reporting by requiring financial balance sheets, recognition of leases, and note disclosures of certain information about lease agreements. Discovery, both GASB and FASB are similar in financial statements reporting, and charter schools seem to prefer to use uh, FASB as it is more applicable to them. Um, so, so that's some of the background. We probably will have some additional information uh, in, in an upcoming um, uh, charter chat. The second one um, is about uh, do most charter schools use SACS uh, reporting all form to present to the board with each interim reporting period. And um, the response there is that charter schools uh, uh, have their boards approve all financial reports, such as budgets, interim reports, unaudited actuals, and the final audit report. Um, and if you're looking for that information, request a, a budget agenda, a board agenda with an action item on the approval of these reports. Only unaudited actuals are required to be submitted in either tax or alternative form unless specified in the memorandum of understanding. So check to see what, uh, what your MOU say uh, for this purpose. Okay. Next, Next slide. slide. Uh, now, um, there are... Um, legislative updates. There are 812 bills that have been introduced that the word charter school uh, uh, appears. Um, and currently we are covering and following on only a few of them. So let me quickly review those. Um, first is Assembly Bill AB 533 by Fong, which allows districts to apply directly to the county office if there is no action by a, a district uh, within the timeframes that are uh, out there in law. Um, the, the second one, AB 984, recommends adding the completion of a semester course in personal finance uh, for all schools. And the third one, Jackson, requires schools to have police officers and makes it a reason for denial. Charters do not include police officers in their safety plan. That one, um, uh, it requires an actual, uh, actual presence of police officers. Next slide, please. SB 426 recommends changing the name of non-classroom-based uh, charters to flex-based instruction and provides a definition of flex-based uh, charter school as a charter school that receives a determination for funding from the state board. Uh, the bill would expand the description of fl flex-based instruction to include, but not be limited to, part-time classroom instruction, personalized learning, hybrid, career-focused, college-ready, adult re-engagement, constructivist, content-focused, and synchronous or asynchronous distance or computer-based education, or any combination of all of these types. Um, Sorry, Dave, I think you might be one slide ahead. Oh, can you roll I, back to AB 1555? Let me, let me go back then. Ah, somehow I doubled, I did that, didn't I? Okay, let's make it then, let's go to AB 1555. Um, and the issue there is it extends the uh, credential requirements for transitional kindergarten teachers, uh, for for everybody, uh, it impacts charters. It impacts all. And then Senate Bill Ten requires that opioid uh, over overdose training and prevention be included all in all school plans, um, charter and non-charter. Next slide, please. 
I already covered pretty much the the um, the ones for SB 426 by um, Senator Nilo. So let me go to uh, SB 739, uh, which amends uh, Ed Code 47607.2, clarifying that a chartering authority is only required to consider verified data if it is provided by the charter school. The bill would also extend the renewal terms an additional two years, a big deal for us as authorizers. And then SBA 10 uh, creates a, uh, attendance and credential exceptions or at promise charter schools, a new category of, of schools that um, we may all need to, 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 to learn a little uh, a bit more about. Um, uh, the, these are, uh, now let me capture that. Promise schools are schools that do both of the following, operate a high school dropout recovery program and diploma, diploma completion program for students 16 to 27 and operate a program pursuant to an MOU for any of the following a local education agency, a county office of ed, a county probation department, a juvenile hall, camp or ranch, or other county assisted operated juvenile detention facility, uh, the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, federally affili affiliated youth build programs, and federal job corps. And then finally, the California Conservation Corps, a local conservation corps certified by the California Conservation Corps pursuant to section 14406 and or 14507.5 of the Public Resources Code. Uh, these are bills that are, are moving through committee right now, uh, and we will provide additional updates um, as they move through the process. Okay, next slide, please. Tom. All right, that's me. So in the in the the world of the State Board of Education, uh, this month's meeting, they had uh, a few charter items. They had uh, another uh, group of requests for non classroom based funding determinations, uh, which which they they processed. And then the the, the difficult one was there there they did have uh, a proposed notice of violation to a to a, a, a board authorized charter school for which LACO, the Los Angeles County Office of Education is providing the oversight. This is a, a, a school that kind of launched in, in, in kind of in the midst of COVID and has really struggled on the enrollment side. So financially it's uh, kind of a scary situation. Uh, there was you know, some debate about um, the the details as there always is when these things go to hearing, but uh, the, the the bottom line was the board decided to issue the notice of violation, uh, and that will give the school an opportunity to go back to ACCS and say this is what our plan is for getting out of this hole, and then that will return to the board. So uh, that is in motion. Uh, and then the agenda for the ACCS you will be able to find at their website, which we've also listed. Great, thanks. Next slide, please. All right, so now we're gonna move into our hot topics, which is information you can use right now. Um, and so we have some program oversight hot topics and a few fiscal oversight hot, hot topics. Um, there are three program hot topics. One is Form 700, um, which is due on April 1st, it has to be completed by April 1st. So if you're an authorizer and you haven't yet requested Form 700 from your charter schools, now would, would be a good time to do so. Um, there will be some additional information on the resource page related to this charter chat. Additionally, renewals, um, the 22, or I'm sorry, 23, 24 charter renewal season is just about to begin. Um, best practice is to meet with your charter schools that who that will be up for renewal um, for the 23-24 school year and discuss with them your expectations and your processes and kind of get a timeline or a, an idea about when they plan to submit their um, petition for renewal. And in your discussion, a good place to begin is with the October 13th, 2022 CDA, CDE letter that was on the updates um, on data for charter schools, charter appeals and renewals. Um, you can find that on the CDE webpage. And also there, I think there's a link on our resource page. And if there isn't, we will put one there um, so that you can have access to that document. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to review our January training on renewal 
or reach out to Cassie um, and we can provide more information. And then finally, the last hot topic for programs is that the CDE has updated the enrollment data request process under Ed Code 47607 D1. This is the process by which an authorizer may request enrollment and testing information for students of charter schools to determine whether or not the school is serving all students who wish to attend. And the resource page will have a link to that process. Next slide, please. And I'll turn it over to Shalu and Cynthia. Thank you, Mishala. So under fiscal oversight hot topics, we'll start with the charter school declining enrollment relief apportionment, section 123 assembly bill 181 of the 22-23 enacted budget provided unrestricted funding to classroom-based charter schools that experienced declining enrollment in fiscal year 21-22. On March 15, CDE submitted the apportionment to the state controller's office for allocation and posted the apportionment letter the schedule and the detail allocation amounts of each classroom-based charter school. You can find a direct link to the CDE funding results website in the resource page. Additionally, the supplemented audit guide on March 1st, 2023, the Education Audit Appeals Panel published a supplemental to the 2022-23 audit guide that reflect changes to conditions of apportionment that affect the current fiscal year. Included in the supplemental audit guide is guidance that relates to school districts, county office of education, and charter schools, auditing procedures for transitional kindergarten. You can also find a direct link to the 2223 audit guide website in the resource page. Now on to Shalou. Thank you, Cynthia. So next is a reminder item um, for um, charter schools. If you have not already received those, Auditors, selection of auditor forms are due by April 1st. Uh, pursuant to Education Code 41020, subsection B3, County Office of County Superintendent of Schools shall provide the audit and the cost of audit shall be chargeable to LEA if they have not submitted their um, selection of auditor form by April 1st. Um, in the resource page, you will find an example of SCCOE auditor selection form that we normally send to our charter schools um, early March so they can provide us this information. And um, you know, uh, some of the COE, they have their own form, but um, in case you wanna take a look at it, there is the form, um, there's an example that we use here um, in the resource page. Um, second is Unemployment insurance rate, um, this may be applicable to the school that participate in the school employee fund. EDD, uh, Employment Development Department has announced unemployment insurance contribution rate for 23-24 fiscal year, um, which is dropped to 0.5%. And this rate is locked for, fiscal, for just one year, and EED will provide a new rate for 24-25 fiscal year by April 1st of 2024. Next slide, please. All right. All right. Um, so Justin or someone, can someone drop into the chat the link for our annual survey? So just want to remind our audience that um, Cassie is funded through a grant, and we like to kind of touch base with you all every now and then to find out how things are going and what information you need from us. So we're going to take the next few minutes to have you do our annual survey. It takes about eight minutes to complete. Um, and we this year added a new question. Um, so if you are a small or rural authorizer, which is one of our focuses or foci, um, let us know if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one technical assistance from Cassie. So we can come to you um, and work with you as an authorizer one-on-one, -on -one, uh, either in person or on Zoom. Um, so that's a question that we want to get some feedback on, but we're going to take the next few minutes, eight minutes rather, um, to complete the survey. Mithla, can I, yes, can please. I, yeah, let me just add a, a plaintive plea here. 
For those of you who are multitasking while you listen into the wonderful insights of Cassie, we would love for you to unmultitask for just a minute and help us out here. And for those who think, oh, this is my chance to multitask and I'm going to go handle this email during this eight minutes because I hate surveys. But I'll just beg and plead. It's really like pulling teeth to try to get survey responses. And it is so valuable to, to helping us shape uh, programming and work that will be uh, answering your needs best. So, so please, please do take a minute to just do this for us. Thank you. All right. So, um, next slide, please. Uh, before we move on, I just want to acknowledge that there were a couple of questions in the chat about the resource page. And I believe Allison and Cynthia have added links that will allow you to access the resource page. Um, so we're moving on to breakout rooms. And if you joined us late, um, or if you didn't get a chance to do this in the beginning, we would like you to rename yourself. Um, and you can look at me as an example uh, on your screen. You'll see that I have the number two because I'm gonna be in the um, breakout room number two, which is the central region. Um, and then I have my name and then I have my agency's name. So if you have not yet been able to rename yourself, please do that. Um, let's see. So non-authorizers and non-authorizers are folks who do not authorize charter schools. You are educational partners of uh, charter schools. You will go into your own separate room um, and that will be room four. So if you're a non-authorizer, please rename yourself with a four in front of your name. And that group will be facilitated by Tom Hutton. If you're in the Northern region, please rename yourself with a one in front of your name. And that group will be author, uh, facilitated by Janice Lorenzo and August Deche. August, I think, oh, yay, good, I got it. All right, and then uh, Central region, will be facilitated by Jeff Hunt, and that's region, that's uh, group number two. And then the Southern region will be facilitated by Araceli Chastain, and that's group three. So please make sure you're renamed. Um, and um, if you're the facilitator, please make sure you begin with introductions. Um, and if there is someone in the wrong group, just shoot us a message so that we can get folks to the right places. Um, Non-authorizers, please make sure that you're going to the non-authorizer group. All right, can um, Amy or Justin drop the link into uh, for the Jamboard into the chat? Um, I think they drop the, the link in there. Okay, and then make sure that all the facilitators have sharing capability. That's, that's done too, so. Okay, great, fantastic. So um, in this breakout room, you can uh, ask any questions you have, uh, follow up on anything that we've talked about today or any other chat, uh, any other charter chats, um, focus on renewal or any topics that um, you need to talk, focus on. Um, am I forgetting anything, Tom or Dave? Morales? Sounds good. Okay. All right, um, Amy, take us to. Okay, opening now. Thank you. All righty. Well, we, as, as usual, we have uh, a quick survey to get your feedback on. Uh, we're, we're soliciting your opinion in many ways today. And, and besides the annual survey on what's going on out there, we also always look for your feedback on how the, the charter chat went today. And if uh, somebody could give us an assist with dropping that link into the chat for us, that would be super. Thank you. And then I think we can uh, move on to the next slide. And Mifla, you want to lead the way through this? You usually come back and direct traffic as we report out. Yeah, sure. So um, why don't we hear from Region 1 first? What were some takeaways from your conversation? I think the biggest um, takeaway that 
makes me smile is that this group or being with other um, people doing the same work is so important, um, especially if you're from a small authorizer. And so there was some reach out for support from um, folks in the group. And then there was great discussion regarding um, what needs to be included if we're posting um, information. Could it just be an executive summary um, before the board makes a decision on a charter? So there was some great feedback regarding that. We had some conversation about material revision and renewal and sussing that out. We heard that there's going to be some great training coming up and um, overall just good connection with the people that are up here um, in the north half of the state. Great. Thank you, Janice. Um, Jeff, Central Region. You're on mute. We can't hear you. Sorry, <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> the first question <laughs> or um, or conversation was a point was around. Uh, what's really interesting was around um, enrollment uh, data and uh, for districts or COEs trying to uh, get a better look at um, in district or in county office in county enrollment. Uh, versus out of district slash county enrollment in our charters. Um, and so that that was like, yeah, it really kind of uh, piqued a lot of folks' interest, um, but there we didn't land on like one easy way to um, find that information without working specifically with charters. Um, and so any insight on that would be great. Um, the other, um, there was a, a question or comment and resources shared about fiscal monitoring timelines um, and resources uh, available. Um, we talked uh, really briefly around SB 139 um, and whether, you know, um, we were kind of taking a wait and see approach and kind of tinkered, or tinkered around with uh, scenarios and how that would look if that were to go through with a two year, um, additional two years. And then finally, where we, uh, the last thing we, um, talked about um, was uh, DAS charters um, and the one-year grad rate going away. How does that look as it relates to um, those of us that are authorizers of uh, DAS charters and looking at post-secondary outcomes or looking at that four-year cohort grad rate that they now default back to on the dashboard? Um, so that's that's right where we end it. Great. Thanks, um, Jeff. And finally, Araceli, representing the Southern region. So we had a couple of questions. Um, we have uh, uh, charter schools that are seeking early renewal um, because utilizing older data, you know, as opposed to waiting for new data qualifies them as a higher tier school. And so they're seeking kind of the seven year while they can, um, but also want don't want to cut their current term short want to you know want to renew early but want to finish their current five-year term and then tack on a seven-year term after that and so you know what everyone's doing for that whether there's any um, some folks have some guidance in their mous regarding when a charter school can submit but for those that don't um, it can get a little bit more sticky so we had some conversation on that and some of the um, things to watch out for there and um, and then uh, there was a question regarding what folks are doing regarding Ed Code 45125.1, which has to do with fingerprinting and background checks for vendors um, that are not under the direct supervision of parents or school employees. And so we um, had a conversation about what folks are um, looking for and what they're uh, collecting, um, if anything, at this point. Great. Thank you, Tom. You also are on mute. Sorry, I did it too. Uh, we, we had a larger than usual group of, of non-authorizer uh, partners uh, today, which was great. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, checklists and resources for for uh, material revisions and you know schools having an interest in knowing what those are that the authorizers would be using. Um, uh, again, stay tuned. We'll have uh, we, we have a quarterly uh, training in the works for Cassie this summer on material revisions. Uh, and then we also went into a conversation about SB uh, 139 and the two-year, uh, another two-year renewal hiatus and, and, and explored various aspects of that um, 
uh, you know, in terms of uh, what what people are hearing about it. And, you know, we, we all were kind of in the dark a little bit about its prospects, but but also, you know, it, to, to kind of to Araceli's point, you know, if there are some schools that are anxious to go earlier and the premises, the data aren't great, does that apply to everybody? Is it or is a sort of an opt-in or opt-out sort of a thing? And um, questions about, uh, you know, one thing we didn't address, which is more on the authorizer side, is we've already had discussions about, you know, for, for those who have big portfolios, is there going to come some kind of, you know, the renewal landslide we've talked about because they're all, all put off and then they all happen at once. And what would this do for that uh, scenario? We didn't talk about that one, but that one just popped into my head now. Uh, and anyway, lo lots of lo lots of little aspects about how this would work in the practicalities and whether people are having conversations with their authorizers about renewal plans and timelines and verified data and that kind of a thing. Great. All righty, thanks. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so um, Cassie has some upcoming events. Uh, we will be presenting at CASBO on a uh, April 6th at 4.15. Uh, the title of our presentation is Charter Authorizing 101 with an emphasis on financial oversight. Uh, quarterly regional trainings for April will be focused on survival tips for small authorizers. So we've got uh, the virtual presentation on April 14th from 9 to 11. Um, we will be in person in Sacramento on April 19th. Uh, time to be determined and specific location to be determined as well, I think. Oh, we, we actually, this is very late breaking news, Mifala, okay. but we're, uh, CDE has graciously agreed to host us and uh, it's going to be nine to noon. Uh, and if, if, and, and we're, we're, we're still beating the bushes for more people to, to sign up for these. There was a deadline for the in-person ones, but now that we, that was kind of for purposes of knowing whether we could do them. Now that we know that we were doing uh, these two, we'd love to get more people to get there if they can. And the in-person is for authorizers only. So if you're a non-authorizer, the option for you is April 14th. Um, and then April 20th, uh, we will be in person at Shasta County Office of Ed in Reading from 9 to noon. Uh, April's charter chat is April 26th at 10 o'clock. And then we will also be presenting at CCAP um, in Palm Springs, June 13th through June 16th. And maybe let me just chime in on that one a little bit, Mifala. Um, For those who were at last year's Cassie pre-conference at uh, which is the Charters 101 uh, at the CCAP conference, it was an all-day affair. And one of the feedback was that's an awful lot of drinking from fire hose in one day. So this year we're actually splitting into two installments: a half day uh, on, on the 13th, a half day on the 14th. Uh, that entails for those uh, who are traveling there a, a hotel night, whereas before maybe you could have just done it uh, in, in, in one day and gone home. So what we're doing is uh, for the first for small authorizers and the details are on the website, um, you can you can get reimbursed for the, the one night's hotel lodging we're, we're the first 30 and we'll see how many come through. And, you know, uh, but and there is a, a threshold about how much enrollment you have in your portfolio, which is kind of correlated with what resources you have. Uh, you can find the details there, but that's a nice offer for the, for the small, the small offices. Uh, and, and you can stay for the whole conference if you want, but the, the pre-conference is standalone. So if you just want to get the one-on-one, uh, you can just come there and, and get the Cassie part. All right, thanks, Tom. Um, next slide. Yeah, so you can contact us at cassie at cde.ca.gov. And finally, thank you. See you next time. Thanks, everyone. Good seeing you. Yes, yes. Hey, everybody. Thank you.